we're going to, Gary and I are going to talk uh, today. Uh, we got a couple of different concepts, right? He has a rule of 10 and, you know, that goes with it is the 10,000 hour thing to get good at something, right? So the reason we're going to bring that up is specifically for jujitsu or my guess, my, my thought was combat sports and, and obviously, uh, I guess, kind of reinforcing that rule or at least talking about that rule or like the things that we think, right? Because as a trainer, right, like, I think you get this question all the time. And I, I know, obviously, I do. That's when I bring it up is that, what do I need to do to get better, right? It's a very generic question. And it's hard to answer. And you can answer, obviously, for some people, like, hey, uh, your escapes are not very good. You can do this and do that. But but that's not always what they're asking. That's part of it. But it's the general question, right? Like, what do I need to get better at jujitsu? And I know for me, another thing that happens is every now and then I'll have, you know, a couple guys that'll get really good over the summer or they'll get really good just out of uh, quote unquote nowhere. And they'll be like, Hey man, like so-and-so is getting amazing. Like, what are they doing? And they always think it's maybe they're watching some BJJ fanatics video and that actually may be a slight part of it, or they're doing this or doing that. They just think there's this magic thing and they don't know what happened. I always know what happened. Um, so that's kind of what I want to talk about today, because I don't think like when I actually tell them what happened, that they understand so that um, just so people know, before Gary and I actually really started live, we, I spent like an, 30 minutes, I don't know, I'm over exaggerating, but at least 30 minutes looking for a quote um, that's not that important. <laughs> Ultimately, once I heard it, I was like, well, that's not even that important, but it's still, it, it'll mean something to me. But it also, it goes with um, a book by Malcolm Gladwell called uh, Outliers that kind of studies quote unquote outliers, whether it's Mozart, um, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, um, just all these people like Rockefeller, like what made them great. And there is a common theme in every single one of them. So uh, this is kind of what we want to talk about today. So anyway, I talked forever. So uh, Gary, what's your thoughts on that stuff? And well, and I, I think it's all going to come back. I, I uh, I've seen the guys get better. Um, that happens. It seems like it happened over a short period of time or whatever. And I know the exact guys. The maybe not your guys exactly, but the exact kind of. Um, growth that happens that you're talking about because I've seen it happen and I'm pretty sure you're going to say that those guys showed up exactly. and, and and um and this is and nobody should take this personally if you're listening to this and and you're thinking to yourself oh man why am I not getting better at jiu-jitsu when Johnny came in and me and Johnny started together and Johnny seems to have skyrocketed and I still feel like I'm I'm stuck here at the bottom it has, it has nothing to do, you give to jujitsu what you can and what you want to get out of jujitsu you will because that's all the time that you're giving to it. And there's no nice way to put that, but if you want, if you want to be a high level competitor in jujitsu, then you have to train all the time. There's just no way out of it. Yeah. And if you just want jujitsu for self-defense, then you can come in three times a week, two times a week, be there for an hour and a half and go home and you'll learn good self-defense and you'll, you'll get a blue belt and you'll have good self-defense, but it's not going to get you. If you think that you want to be a competitor, it's not going to get you to that competitor level. And it, unfortunately, I, I, I always think of that meme. It was like, Hey, if I run, you know, if I run three miles a day, will that make my jujitsu better? No. Going to jujitsu will make your jujitsu better. Exactly. Yeah. And I, we used to have that conversation before. Actually, that's funny that you bring that up. Before that meme that solidified what I used to tell people, which was that. Because I, for example, you know, I'd have people come in that were marathon runners, right? So we would think they'd have good cardio. Even ultra runners, that means they run 50 to 100 uh, miles in a race, right? And they would gas of, after a round or two. Mostly because, as we know, if you don't know jujitsu, you don't know where relax, right? So the entire time they're going at a sprint pace, right? Um, but yeah, so, and they would say like, and then also what is the other common thing uh, that people say is like, hey, I need to get in shape before I go to jujitsu. And that's really what that meme comes from is that if that's what you're saying, you're never going to go to jujitsu because the only thing that gets you in shape for jujitsu is jujitsu. And then that kind of ties into what I just said is that yeah like my point when I tell that to somebody is I know marathon runners ultra marathon runners that run 100 miles that I cannot do cannot hope to do that cannot last five ten minutes here however I'm overweight 
and you think I'm in shape <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> because I do jujitsu, right? Like I don't do those other things, you know? Um, so that's exactly right. right? I, I think, and that goes back to like, I, I think let's, here's what I want to, I think we should do. Let's start with a little bit of the 10,000 hour stuff because I, we're both familiar with that. And then we'll go to your rules of 10, right? So listening to the thing that we just listened to on the on bef- beginning of this, and you may have wrote it down. That's what I'm asking. So 10,000 hours, what is that equivalent to? So the 10,000 hours, uh, it, according to the book, it said that it was uh, three hours a day or roughly 20 hours a week over 10 years. And then we both agree that 10 years, right? That's ironic because how long do they say it takes to get a black belt in jujitsu? Rough, roughly, roughly 10 years to get a black belt in jujitsu. Yeah. Which, so I, that's ironic, number one, but also the other thing is you really break that down. Do any of us actually train three hours a day, 20, 20 hours a week? No, but we're well, getting it right. Well, I also think, now I think you can do stuff outside of jujitsu per se, that is jujitsu related that can count to that time. Because I know for, for quite a while when I'd started that I was doing a lot of stuff at home as far as like research, watching videos. And my mind was always thinking jujitsu. So I wasn't, yeah, I might be doing, I, I might be done with the physical portion of jujitsu when I got off the mat, but I would go home and research stuff. If I got beat with a North South choke for the first time and I hadn't seen it because I was a dumb white belt, I would go home and I would watch every North South choke video I could find on YouTube. And then I would think about, okay, uh, you know, if if their neck is around me, what is it? Why is it working? What is it? what, What is happening for this choke to work? Okay, well, if I, you know, what can I do? If I look inside, you know, look to the inside, the choke is nullified. And then I'd watch every defense on the video. And th- this is actual scenario that happened to me because the first time I was ever tapped out in a competition was a North South choke as a white belt. And I didn't know anything about it. We just hadn't gone over it yet. And I didn't know anything about it. And so then I like, I needed to know everything about that. I've never been tapped with a North South choke, not just, not just in competition. But I've not been tapped with a North South choke since because I became hyper-focused on it because I was so upset about it. And I would ask people like, like, like try and go North South choke. If you can, I'm going to, I'm going to try all these defenses. And since then I've not been tapped with the North. Now I've, I've been wrenched on pretty good and I've been really uncomfortable, but I've not been tapped because I, like I took it to a next level about not being tapped with it and just thinking about it constantly. And I think that that kind of stuff, that kind of mental training can add to those 10,000 hours. That actually, yeah, no, actually that I'm glad you said that. Cause that's, a lot of times when I think through this stuff, I'll think through something, especially because we're just doing a podcast, like just really skim through it. So I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. Like, you know what I mean? And then when you say that, that actually makes total sense, right? There's something like an aspect I didn't look at. And you're hundred percent right. Cause I've also had that speech, uh, given that speech in practice a million times and talk to people, for example, my, my friend Rick, right? Like those, like I, I bring him up all the time because, you know, he and I are role and, you know, we're, we're both black belts and we have good roles, but he can tell me step by step what my game is and what I do. And I have no earthly ideal. Like when he says it, I'm like, really? Is that what I do? I have no idea, right? But what happens if, if I sweep him or defeat something that he's doing, you know, which is kind of sucks in a way because his mind works different than mine. Meaning that I wish I could catalog all the things that he's saying because what happens is maybe I beat some pass that he's doing and it worked pretty well but I kind of forgot about it. And so the next time it's like, I'm redoing the whole thing. And then if I get lucky, I'll hit the same pattern a few times and then I'll kind of do it. And then for example, what happened with he and I recently is that I, he has a pretty specific half guard passing game um, that that gives everybody a pretty hard time. And there was a time that I really, like I had it figured out and it wasn't an issue at all. And then, uh, you know, both of us have had injuries at different times and now we're back rolling again. I do not have that figured out anymore. It's like starting from scratch. So I wish I knew all the things he said, like, cause he'll literally break it down. And like, it's amazing. But the point was, I bring that up because what it, he'll just, he'll catalog that and go figure out the answers or either YouTube's it or he looks on BJJ fanatics. And cause I remember this kind of sound dumb, but I, I just like, like when I'm passing half guard and you turn and face the legs, right? 
some people call it reverse half guard, whatever. I did, like no earthly idea what that was called. And then one time he was telling me like he had an answer for all this reverse half guard stuff, right? And I was like, well, that's cool. But I didn't even know it had it was doing it because I was passing him that way. And he's like, I, you know, I was at the airport and I researched it and I've got all these. I'm like, well, whoever you're doing that to is in some trouble. And then I like he showed me the video. I was like, oh, like that's what I do. I just like <laughs> like I didn't know. I didn't know that was a name, you know, and like so and you know he, you know he's a professional he's a doctor he's got a lot of stuff to, going on and so he doesn't actually make the gym as far as much as some other people however like he told me he's someone his wife goes to bed at night because he spends time with the family he gets on his ipad and studies jiu-jitsu all night he's a little add so he's got a lot of more energy than i do um meaning that you know like i'm fine to look stare at a wall and just chill out and meditate and think about nothing he doesn't like he can't sit still so like any free moment he is constantly like learning jujitsu if he's on an airplane for four hours where i'll sit and listen to a podcast or watch a movie and that's enjoyment he's studying jujitsu so he actually studies jujitsu 10 times more than i do and he's getting ten thousand hours in physically he's probably only getting like two or three per week right he's an hour monday an hour wednesday and that's pretty close to it. Maybe an open mat here or there, but and and that's I guess until you until you brought that up now, I really even though I was kind of telling people that he studies all the time, I never really put it together. He actually really is getting the mental reps and that and the he's studying. He's like, okay, this guy does this, so I need to do this. The so next time he rolls, he's got a plan and he's doing it. Where I've already forgot what the plan is. I'm there physically, and I'm doing kind of what this this thing is. Practice is not the thing you do when you're good. It's the thing that makes you good. I'm practicing but I'm already kind of good. Right. But I'm not actually doing the thing that makes me good, which is what he's doing. So it kind of all ties together. Right. Like, right. Well, and I think, I think, you know, when you, I think most of us listen to Joe Rogan or whatever, and he had, he's had John Dan her on, he's talked about John about how John, like when he's not training, he's watching film or he's watching, you know, he, like he's not turned his brain off to, to grappling. He's still yeah. thinking about grappling. And, you know, that's, I think that's a big part of it is people and, and part of this is life, right? Like everybody's got jobs and wives and kids and, and things that pull them away from the mats. Um, but I have a real hard time shutting my jujitsu brain off. Um, and like everything, everything that I do, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll think of whatever technique it was that we were working last night. I'll, be, I'll, I'll think to myself, how can we make it better? And then I've lost 10 minutes thinking about arm bars or I've lost. And, and I do that all the time. Um, and, and that is that it, it's, it's hard to quantify that as far as like, how much time am I spending outside of jujitsu, like off the mats, do like thinking about jujitsu because it, it really is kind of all day which yeah and actually now you say that too that's the thing i will admittedly say that i've been missing for the last five ten years really honestly like i do think that's how my mind worked before um but then I, you know i've got a pretty mentally challenging job my job now is literally putting out fires like i have a plan when i wake up and then that plan nine times out of ten that's an exaggeration goes to shit because i've i've got to put out fires like somebody did something wrong a patient's hurt an office is mad so my day especially during work is all work and then also more than 50 percent of the time it's till i go to bed because it's i still got to figure out the, like i've put out the fires now i'm like but i still got to make these people happy and i've, I've got to take the ex, extra step and that's my that's what feeds my family that's my job and so then what also happened to me in this last 10 years it's literally since i got this the the job i have now which is and medical device sales but sometimes i'll be honest you know i was so tired mentally when i got to the gym that i i didn't roll which was not a good answer you know i would teach class but i was just exhausted wasn't in a great mood um which you know the answer which you know it's taken me a few years to figure this out but the answer to not being in a great mood is working out right and we all know this but it's like you get you just get trapped in this behavior so i would I would teach class not necessarily practice not necessarily roll just go back home and deal like i just took that hour or two break to deal with class but i wasn't actually mentally there i don't i would think just being honest with everybody right so 
Um, and then I would go back and deal with work, right? And then now I finally was able to switch. I've gotten a new, new job and it, it's not like, it's not mentally challenged, it's not, but I've recalculated or recalibrated rather uh, my life. And so now I'm putting more effort into those things, right? And those, even though I was preaching that, personally, that's not what I was doing. And, and obviously Gary, you know, as my friend, there's a lot of th- like, it's just, I'm checked out like a lot. It probably, I mean, you may or may not know any different, but I'm doing my best to fix that. And it really probably this podcast too will help all that stuff. I'm trying to, trying to fix that stuff. There's other stuff that wouldn't happen, but that's kind of why I want to talk about this. I get it now. Like what got me to the, the so-called plateau, like, Another thing, I guess we mentioned, like they always say, like jujitsu is a perishable skill, right? So once you get there, you don't stay there. You're right. there and it's a perishable skill, meaning if you don't con- continue your hours of practice and your even your mental jujitsu, like we're talking, it's going to go away, right? And so and then you've you've got to even work harder to get out. And that's where I, I, I've noticed, you know, we talk about the blue belt curse and all that stuff. And, you know, we're not going to go down all those roads, but that's what happens to people is that like once you get in, you, you, you got to like whatever your goal was and then you kind of check out, then all of a sudden you're like, well, I don't want to lose to this guy. Like I taught that guy, he might kick my ass, right? And then you get in this bad cycle of, well, I'm not going to show up. I'm a blue belt. I don't want white belts beating me up or I'm a purple belt. I don't want blue belts beating me up. Luckily, I was always able to beat those things. Like it's, and believe me, like if you don't practice for two months, it's happened to me several times. You come back and guys are going to kick your ass and you got to suck it up, right? And it sucks if you're on a gym and you're going to be like, and like, you know, the thing is, nobody really does care as long as you address it. Like, you think they're going to care? You're going to be like, well, I don't want to lose to Joe Blow. Then everybody's going to be like, well, he lost to Joe Blow and he owns a gym. What an idiot. No, as long as you keep working on it, you're fine. But we all think people care more than they do. They don't really give a shit. They, they might be like, yeah. Gary, your coach sucks today. But he'll be better tomorrow. <laughs> like, right? I think. And, like, well, I, and I actually do things to, like, kind of make sure that uh, – to keep myself coming in and I like so <laughs> it was kind of a bad it hit at a bad time but 2020 at the beginning of 2020 I told the guys I was like everybody's mission because we was you know getting ready to open up Bobcat and all that I was like everybody's mission should be murder me like I want you guys to kill me and it went so far is that I've got a gi and it says kill Gary 2020 on it. like that that's the gi. And it, I wanted everybody's objective to be able to tap me. And it keeps me in check because I know that they're coming for me, you know? And then when I get tapped, I get a little angry and maybe I'm a little rougher on them the next round. But but it, it, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't, it, it forces me to not slack on my side of my jujitsu bargain. You know, like the, the deal that I've made with myself for jujitsu, it, it doesn't allow me to slack on my side of it. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. That's another, probably a mental trick, right? To go like, maybe I could use that in the time where I'm in a, you know, slump, right? We all go through that stuff. And maybe it's a little bit, mine was probably a little bit harder because I've been, you know, I run a gym. So, but I, in my mind, I'm like, well, I'm teaching the gym, I'm doing my job, but what I'm not doing is something for myself, right? And that's actually why, you know, one of the things I was listening to that book called Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, right? Like, is because of that, like, I, I, you know, getting back to all the roots of everything and, and going back and say, okay, like, we're, what's happened to me? Like, why wasn't I mentally engaged for a while? You know, and, and I need to get back there. But in some of those things, you know, right? Like, if your goal is to, like, for example, like one time I wanted to be in West Virginia, it's a different time, but, you know, I was like, I want to be the best MMA gym, right? You know, thankfully, we're like one of the few MMA gyms. So it was, wasn't that hard, you know? But I accomplish that goal and that goal's over. So that's done. And then you like, yeah, all those things, right? You want to be a black belt. You want to do this. You want to have a great gym. And then you accomplish all these things in your mind. And then uh, and then if you don't move forward, you don't make a new goal, you get complacent, right? And that happens a lot. Like I, I would bet it happens because I've, I've rolled with like a ton of black belts over my time and some are better than others. And right, like it's the same thing it's because they reached the goal and they quit practicing i teach gym and their busy life and things are different and you know that's the thing so i guess that my point is like it well, was what, I, 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 i'll just kind of to talk about that i've i've thought about that quite a bit since i got my black belt it's like you know and, and you've sort of talked about it as well but like why am i doing jujitsu now 
because as long as I show up, I'm guaranteed to strike. Yeah, no, I joke about that all the time, right? Because people right? Are like, and you yeah, and that's a, that's the thing is you. I'm yeah. a lot. That's like that's it. I live. Yeah. Yeah, and so so that's where I'm at now. So what it, what is jujitsu to me now? What it I, I and that's the thing is like finding the thing that keeps me coming in is like why do I want to keep coming in? You know, is it just to get a stripe or am I really trying to learn something new today? And yeah. and so that's the hard thing is like the a lot of times coming back to the ten thousand hours. A lot of times there's a lot of things in life that I've done that after I got the general understanding of that I stopped doing it yeah yeah so like for and i've had a lot of hobbies like i i would i i learned how to sew and i could sew fairly okay it didn't look terrible you know so i i was kind of a blue belt in sewing and then i stopped doing it mm -hmm. and then i made beer for a while and i i you know i learned the whole process of the beer making process how to ferment it and the fermentation bucket and uh, second secondary fermentation and adding different uh, 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 things to flavor it differently and then after I became about a blue belt in in beer making I stopped doing it. and so the blue belt the blue belt curse isn't just in jujitsu I think it's really kind of everything in life is that sometimes we're just curious and we want to find out how things work or understand those things and then after we get somewhat competent in it that's enough for us. I don't need to, I don't need to know anymore. And yeah. I, I, I think that's what, that's what the blue belt curse is. I think so too. Yeah. I think it's a mixture, right. Of what we said earlier is, you don't, you know, it's, it takes some balls to, to get hurt or take some time off to go and take your lumps from people that are so-called not as good as you. Right. And that's, that's a lot as an ego killer. And then the other thing is exactly what you said. You're right. Like, part of life is learning new skills but how far do you want to take those skills do you have a general curiosity for you know just like you just said I same thing I was like I need to learn a new thing I need a new hobby I don't you know I don't what it is so I was like I'm going to learn how to fly airplanes right so I, I did that for a little while but I didn't even become a blue belt but it was I you know I just discovered I didn't like it like I, I would talk to people that loved it and they're like man there's you know not to be crass but that's like one of my couple of my friends were like man I, my dick never gets so hard until i fly an airplane it's so fun it's so like so empowering and blah 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 and i'm like well that sounds cool <laughs> like all right and like let's in and then i did it and i'm like well yeah like that shit's not happening like <laughs> it's not that cool at all i don't really get it i didn't i wasn't getting the same thrill so i quit but it was not because i couldn't learn it. i was just like well that's you know i learned enough for whatever but i think you're right like yeah in the jiu-jitsu realm it's a different, you know, I had a passion, a hard, I still have a passion, right? But you go through levels of uh, goals and commitment. And that was the biggest thing in my life when, as a young man, right? That was before I was married. I got my black belt in 2009. I also got married in 2009. So then my life changed. I got three boys and things are different, right? When I went, my whole life was having a successful gym. And then even when you get your black belt, or there's the most jacked I ever was, was around that time, 2009. It's huge. Cause I thought everybody's going to come for me to see if my black belt's legit. So I got to be ready. Right. So for like a year or two, I mean, I was huge trained every day and, and I was ready and I talked shit. Like if anybody said, you know, somebody would be like, well, he's not this or that. And I was like, well, they know where I'm at every Saturday and Sunday have them just show up. Right. Then like that period goes on none of that stuff happened. Nobody really gave a shit. It was just in my mind. Right. So like, then I was like, it, it just dwindled, right? And then the focus become your job and your family and this and that. And uh, so none of, none of this is bad stuff. I'm just saying this is what happens in life. So now I'm trying to rekindle that because also if you come to my gym and I don't have the same passion for teaching and the same joy of getting on the mat with you, then I think at a certain point you'd question like, why am I here? That's my thought. And I think that's legit, right? So that's why I just come to Jesus with myself. I was like, man, I need to get, I need to get back to normal, right? Like where I was a couple of years ago. So that's what I'm in the process of now. And I've actually never had more fun learning new stuff and learning stuff and finding the joy now. Cause it's not like my game got to me to where I was, but the game of jujitsu evolves. And, I, and that's actually cool. It's not a bad thing. That's actually saying, man, it's fun. I can learn until the day I die. So then I can rekindle that passion. And then that's also why I'm learning this. Like I said, going back to 10,000 hours is because what happens to me, we talked about this at the gym the other day, we go over a ton of new moves, love it. 
I'm like, man, that's great. Man, this is awesome. This new X guard stuff, this new butterfly suite is great. But if I do not practice it over and over, what happens is I roll the exact same roll that I've been rolling from. It just goes away after that week and I move on to the next thing. So I'm, I'm after to put in that hours to, to keep it in my game, right? Yeah. Well, and so that, that's actually something too that I've kind of pair. There's two things that I want to parry off of that. One is, have you ever like, you'll be teaching, you'll be like, hey, it's time to teach this certain class. And you forgot that that was part of your game. And for a long time, you used it all the time. Yeah. And then for whatever reason, you stop using it. And you're like, why? And then, then you teach that class again. And you're like, why did I stop using it? And, and it's like, it's it like up. an old friend. Like, why did I stop seeing that guy? I love that guy. And I just, we kind of fell, we kind of distanced ourselves, but I loved hanging around. And I should be hanging out with him all the time. And I find that with jujitsu moves all the time. It's like, God damn, I forgot that arm bar from, you know, from this position. Why, why did I quit using it? But you'll forget it again if you don't start using it, right? Like, so even though, right. like, you have a conversation, then you move on to the next set, and then you're like, damn, I need a yeah, but it, but then that go into our thing. Like, if you don't practice it, it's perishable, right? It, yeah, no, and it, I'm glad you brought because I tell people that same thing. Like, every time I do a thing, I was like, I used to do this all the time, and why I quit I, sometimes is because it was too successful, right? And you don't want to tap somebody out all the time with some move, like remember arm triangles that was my thing at one point in my life right and then I quit doing them because it worked all the time I was like I, I just move on and now I'm not even as good as I'm at them than I used to be like weird and that happens with moves all the time it's like it's funny I it, literally I've had the exact same conversation with myself and people I'm like gosh I used to love this thing so it's like I wish I did it still you know but now I've got, you know, and I'm sure you're the same. I have a pretty, even though I said, and this is true, actually, like when, some, if you, somebody said what my game is, I could kind of tell you, but I couldn't break it down as somebody, as well as somebody that rolls with me. It's a, um, there's some people that do really good and they roll with you. And then like, for example, like if, um, if you're going to teach a private, somebody comes in and he's like, Hey, I want you to teach a private and tell me what I need to work on. There's some people that they can do that really well that actually is not my expertise. I would rather watch that person roll with another person and I can break it down. My thought process is because I can't, like I'm on autopilot when I roll, I literally am. I'm not, it's just how my mind works. I don't really set things up. I, I probably am, but I can't remember it after. So somebody said, man, that thing you do is really cool. Most of the time I have to even ask them what they're talking about. I have no recollection 30 seconds later, right? So my, my, I know my weakness, right? Like, so if you, somebody says, Hey, why don't you take a private? I want you to roll with me. I'm like, I'll roll with you for sure. But I, that's not the best way to learn. It's better. We'll do both. I need you to roll with somebody else. And I can watch you and I see your patterns and watch you and see like, are you setting things up correctly? Because I think when I roll with somebody, I don't know, they're not doing a good job because I'm making them not do a good job. Or I don't know if I'm doing a good something because I set them up. I just really like, I just got to see it black and white for me. It's black and white. There's no gray area. Like there, that's not always true, right? There's tons of stuff that I can tell people, hey, you're doing this over and over, or I did this four times in a row, you didn't stop it. That's pretty basic, but I would rather like really break somebody down by watching them, not just here's a couple moves. And maybe that's that's all the other people are doing. Maybe, I, I don't know, but I, it, it's just not the way I think somebody should, you know, I hate, I, I hate that question, right? Every Saturday or Sunday, you know, we had open mat today, everybody, as soon as we're done, like, okay, man, what do I need to work on? I'm like, I give them an answer, but like, again, I just feel like I'm not giving them the best answer. Cause I'm like, I don't know. Like I was working on this. This is not even how I roll. Like right? I was trying to butterfly sweep you today. I was trying to do X guard. So like asking what you need to do today, this is not really what's going on. I'm forcing these moves like, because I want to work on them. So like, you know what I mean? Like, does that make sense? Like, and that's it, the no, thing I, if you're forcing things, that's not jujitsu. You just flow when you're doing jujitsu, you know? Right, right. Well, and, and that's, and that is the, you know, there's a big part of jujitsu that, that is that when I, whenever somebody asks me like, ah, oh, you know, what do I need to work on? My answer is, is what are you comfortable with? Yeah. Right. Because if that's your game, start funneling everything to that. If you're a wrestler and you want, you want to be on top and pressuring, then if you, you need to find ways from the bottom to the top, plain and simple. So do you like, think, so this is a different subject and sorry to interrupt, but do you think there's a lot of gyms and I like this concept um, and I've been trying to start, 
take people to your A game. And then people say, what's your A game? So, okay, all right, in guard, what are your passes? If, or I guess if you're on top and you're passing it, what are your passes? That's your A game. What two passes do you use? What submissions do you use when somebody's in your full guard? What submission, you know what I mean? That's your A game. And then work people to your A game, right? And then yeah. if somebody's in your B game, C game, that would be step two or three. But not really step two or three because your A game is still your top sweeps, right? I think that's a good concept. I mean, I, I just, same concept I already have. I just like it when people actually spell shit out for me, right? Somebody spelled that out as A game. And I was like, oh yeah, I already do that. I just didn't call it that, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug my computer in or it's going to die. So give me a second here. Um, but it sounds like you're using that. Con if you're saying, what are you good at? That's what you're saying. It's like, okay, what's your, right? And, and that's probably what I said too, but I like that concept because then somebody has to actually think about it. Like, yeah. Well, and that's the thing is like, where do you feel one, where do you feel comfortable? And two, what do you have the most success with? Right. Because there's no, it, it, just like in the MMA, right. If, if there's a guy who we know he is a jujitsu world champion and he goes into the UFC, it's probably a bad idea to go, to go to the ground with that guy. Like that's not a smart move. You should try and keep the stick. So you, and he's going to try and take you to the ground. And we've seen it with guys. I mean, we've seen it with a ton of guys that, that were jujitsu guys, Damian Maya. Like he was, he didn't knock anybody out. You know, Ryan Hall isn't knocking anybody out. So their, their whole game is trying to funnel everything into the ground. And, um, and I, and even when we look at guys like, like uh, Marcelo Garcia, which I personally think he's probably the pound for pound greatest of all time, in, in my opinion, and I, there's plenty of arguments outside of that, but his game was arm drag, guillotine, X guard, and then take your back and choke you with a rear naked choke. And he did that for three, four years at ADCC and beat everybody with it. Yeah. You know? and, and same thing with Hodger Gracie. Hodger, it was take down, pass guard, mount, cross choke and he did that to everybody and so um funneling stuff into your your game is is, is a big part i think of, of getting good at jujitsu is finding out what you're good at and where you're comfortable and then and then funneling it to that putting your time and energy into that you should be aware of all the other stuff but if you're good at something use it <laughs> yeah and would you say that that makes sense so then Obviously, when you're good at something, you'll continue to fine tune it and be good at something. But that kind of goes, I just happened to look down when you were saying that. And when you said, if you're good at something, use it. And that goes to that saying where it says, practice isn't the thing you do when you're good. It's the thing that makes you good. Like, right? And I'm obviously, I'm stuck in this phrase and I've been stuck in it for three days. I like the way it's phrased. And I, I guess it's making me think, right? But it kind of goes to that, right? Is that all right, let's say that, let's just use you and I for an example, and it's not bragging or anything. It's just, we're black belts, right? So at this point, right, practice is not the thing that's going to make us good, but it's the thing that made us a black belt. So it's not, it's a little, little tricky when we're talking about being a black belt, but what I would say is I've got a certain game and, and maybe jujitsu evolves past that game or it, you know, you just mentioned like Hodger Gracie, all these, this pretty basic stuff, right? I'm not saying experts, yeah. but let's say mount to cross collar from Hodger Gracie. Everybody would, would say in, in essence, that's basic jujitsu. And sometimes people think that's a put down, right? But nobody could stop yeah. it. Don't matter what their game was, right? But, and I'm not saying that he didn't. So it, first of all, let's go that phrase. He practiced to get good at that. And that's, you know, then he, he perfected and he kept doing it, right? But if you were, I guess, to take it as we're talking about people that are already like masters and they put in the 10,000 hours to be good at those certain things. That's why he's good. He just practiced, practiced, practiced and crushed it. Right. So that's what made him good. And that's what that phrase means. Like you, you can't just just get there without practice. You can't you can't do it. Right. But once you're there. Right. What do you want to do next? Right. So if you want to have a new skill and that's kind of what we've been talking about this whole time. Rather, it's something you used to do and they don't do for whatever reason in order to put it in your game. And again, like I talked about it earlier, like I do stuff and you do stuff. And why don't we do that? And then we say that and then maybe we don't do it again still because like I'm not making it. I'm not forcing it because I like I get bored with it. I'm just so used to flowing the right way. So, for example, to put this in perspective, like 
the last probably three months I've been teaching X guard butterfly and now uh, butterfly passing pressure passing because Jake Shields was in, but they all flow together, right? Because if one guy's trying to pass the, the, the butterfly, one guy's obviously trying to do the butterfly and then butterfly obviously tra transitions into X guard, depending on what they do. And there's, you know, and their leg locks come in ashy and you know, ashy grimy and all that stuff, right? Perfect. But like I did a little like X guard or um, butterfly is definitely part of my game forever. Right. But there's a million more moves I could do. And X guard was not one. Right? It's just not something I really did. Um, so now, you know, for the last three months, that's all I do. Like it's just and I'm forcing it. And now it's becoming more comfortable almost to where like I'm forgetting what I used to do. You know, like it just happening. But that's what I want. I want to just keep on and resist the urge because I'm, along this, I'm also doing other stuff because I'm teaching. So like I do want to do that stuff, but I don't want to stray away from those things before I've gotten to where I'm a comfortable level. And I've, I've forced myself to not do that. Like now we, the other day I did guillotines because I, you know, I've got a torn ACL and I was like, well, it's my knee can't handle X guard and all this stuff today. So let's do some guillotines. And then, uh, we did it for a day and you know i had a guy with a broken neck like literally has a broken neck so he's like well i was just gonna leave and i was like oh that sucks and i have a torn it like but what happened was my knee started feeling better you know enough to where it doesn't matter and like back to it but i wanted to do that because if i would have went to guillotines i'm going to focus on guillotines why am i doing guillotines because it's another thing that i used to do when i was a white belt and i haven't done since it's not part of my game i'm like why do I not do this? Like, I need to figure out, like, why I need to just start making my, it's just not part of me because I wasn't really a wrestler. You know, I'm not doing snap takedowns, not controlling the head. Um, but again, same thing. We all know a guilt team, but I'm like, why am I not doing this? I need to like start putting them in. So we're doing some uh, Jake Shield stuff, one, because he did a but, seminar one, you know, all that stuff, right? It's it's kind of funny that you said that because guillotine was one of those things that I like, I, I taught guillotines the other night as well. And then I went to an open mat. It was actually a, a, a buddy of mine down here in North Carolina. He had, he trains at another gym, invited me to come to open mat. So I went to the open mat and I hit two guillotines and I never hit guillotines. And it was one of those things like after I taught the class, it was like, oh yeah, you forgot that this is even an option. It kind of goes back to now I've never been big on guillotines or anything, but like, because I just went over it, it was so much more obvious that it's here. <laughs> and as a teacher, just so people know, I do think it's good practice. If I'm teaching you guillotines or teaching you open guard, it's that when we roll, I'm going to use those things, right? Because yeah. one, I'm yeah. showing you it works. And then two, like, well, that's what I'm basically showing you it works. <laughs> that's basically yeah. number one. But number two is the other thing. But it, let me, just because it, it took me off subject, but I have a good question on Instagram here. And I just told him I'd answer. So, um, it fits right in. It says, with limited training time, do you think it makes sense to focus on your A game? What's your thoughts on that? And this, I know exactly, this is a friend of mine who uh, used to train with me and trains with Bristol Jiu-Jitsu in Virginia now, and I, he, I know exactly what he's talking about. But um, it's a kind of a loaded question. Got, I got some answers. So with li limited training time, do you think it makes a lot of sense to focus on your A game? That means that let's say he's only making it a week or two, right? Um, and, and if I'm not mistaken, he's a purple, maybe brown belt, the guy that's asking. Um, so anyway, let me ask, what do you think first? And So well, I will say it purple brown. Um, if I'm just wanting to continue to like, man, that's hard. Because <laughs> at, 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 it, well, at, at white belt, at white belt, you should be, uh, it's uh, the fundamentals, right? And then at blue belt, you have to decide whether or not you're going to, it, like purple belt has kind of decided that he's going to be here for the long haul, for the most part, right? So if you get a purple belt, you might as well just stick around and get your black belt. But white and blue belts, um, it's a little different because you're still working on fundamentals and your A game, you don't even have a game, right? <laughs> you're still probably getting beat up by everybody in the gym. So once you get, once you're, if you're, if you're purple brown, I mean, for me, yeah, I would probably concentrate on what I'm good at and I would, I would concentrate on why I would start being more analytical about why, when it works, why does it work? Mm -hmm. And when it doesn't work, where did it fail? And then how can I, how can I tighten that up? 
and and I would be, you know, I would try and work in some other techniques, but if I'm a pressure passer, I'm going to, I would focus all my energy on funneling everything to that game. You know, I'm, if I'm a guard player, if I, if I'm really good at lasso, then I would try and, and I would start funneling everything. Like, how can I take these different scenarios and funnel it back into this lasso system that I have? Yeah. And I, I think I agree. And, and just to be honest, I had a little bit more time to think about it while you're talking, right? I cheated a little bit. Um, but here's why I think I agree is because I think if you're, if we're, and it goes to what you're saying, if we're, we're judging every belt, right? White belt, you're just, you don't know what's going on. Be, blue belt, you're probably figuring your game out. Purple belt, you've kind of got a pretty good idea with what your game is. And then brown belt, you, you pretty, you know, and you're perfecting it. And black belt, the only, like what I was always told was the difference between a brown belt and a black belt is just timing, right? It's just time of the mat. That guy's not missing those split second sweeps anymore. And he's got it, you know, he's just like we've been saying, funneling towards your game and he's, it's happening, right? It's like, for example, when we, we've been talking about the whole time about learning stuff, when you don't have 10,000 hours in, I miss things, right? Like, I'm like, oh, there was that thing. Like, and we know it's better people we roll with, those fleeting moments are gone. So it's more about, even if like me, who says I roll on autopilot, like I have to roll on autopilot because I'm muscle, muscle memory and my body just does it. I, you know, I might not even, you know, subconsciously I know what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm funneling toward a certain place and then I'm taking advantage of that place. Um, so my, I think you're right. Yeah. I think as a purple slash Brown, you should focus on that game. And then if you're adding something, because let's face it, all of us are adding stuff at all the time. It should be things that are enhancing that game, right? Um, rather that's leading them to, as you said, the lasso guard or leading them to the passes that you're good to you. Like, and you'll know it when you see it. But a lot of times we don't, we don't know what that is. We, we, you can't really search it out, but there's, there's been a million times I've bought, you know, back in the VHS days or DVD days and now, you know, digital media where I buy something and you could watch the entire DVD, which is, good content doesn't necessarily fit into your game, but there's one or two things that you're like, bam, and you can use them that night and then maybe use them forever because it was literally just fit in. It was a piece of the puzzle that you're missing. Um, and that's what I think. I think you should just continue to find those little pieces that you're missing and little things that if you're, I guess to say what you're saying is that if things, if you're not being analytical and there's things are failing and maybe you don't even know why they're failing. You just know that something fails and maybe you got to, you struggle through it maybe. Cause that's the other thing. Sometimes things work that don't work. Right. I, I do a very technical move and then I scramble and I make it work. That's really not jujitsu. It kind of is. Cause I'm going to say you still made it work. Right. But it could be just because your grip is not in the right place. And you don't, if you would have had it in the right place, you wouldn't have had to scramble at the end. Right. Um, for example, there's an X guard sweep that I'm working on now. It's an overhead sweep that I do a lot. Um, but sometimes at the end, I thought about this today. There's sometimes at the end, I fall in a weird spot and people can start to do stuff and I've gotten out of it. But a lot of the guys that I've, I've gotten out of, and sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's not, they're also a lot lighter than me. So for example, let's say that I was with you, we're the same weight, did the same thing. I wonder, I'm like, could I do what I just did with somebody that's also 240. Of course, I can do somebody that's 150, 160, but I'm realistic. I'm like, man, I, you know, I feel like I use a little muscle there, a little size. Um, so you know, I actually, while I'm driving, that's where I do a lot of my thinking on the way to jiu-jitsu or leaving jiu-jitsu is, you know, we're here, we're, what am I gonna do today? Here's a move I did recently, uh, you know, had some problems, but yeah, anyway. On that X guard sweep, I've got to figure a better ending. The sweep is beautiful. It's perfect. I sweep them over my head. I land and I just don't think my legs and hands are in the right place quite yet. So I'm going to go research it, see what I'm doing. Cause also it's kind of weird when you don't have video of yourself. I just think in my mind what it is. Um, but to answer his question, that's all that I'm doing. It's like, it's a move that I think that fits in my game that I want to work on. And I need to fix that other than going to guillotines. Guillotines are important to me. I want to get better at them. I don't know why I suck at them, but it's not high on the priority list, right? It's, right. It's, it can take a break, right? It can wait. Well, and I think, I think too, that, that we also need to accept, especially at purple belt and brown belt, that 
your your body type plays into what kind of game that you can be good at not that you can't make other things work but if you've got short thick legs it's going to be real hard to be a good guard player because it's hard to pull off triangles it's going to be hard to keep a close guard and i'm not saying that it can't be done but it's just more difficult but those same guys have a lot of success with butterfly guards and X guard because they're able to weave their legs in where maybe somebody like you who has longer legs can't do it as easily. And so yeah. I think that's why we've seen guys like Marcelo have so much success with X guard um, because he's a smaller guy going up against these guys who are much bigger. There were, there was more room for him to be able to get his legs in there. Yeah. No, so, that's definitely- so, so taking advantage, I think, you know, that's part of why we find our game at Purple Belt and Brown Belt is, is you know, from white to blue, we're kind of being exposed to the, the entire thing. And, uh, you know, not unlike a colander, we, we use that time to kind of like sift out all the stuff that, that I know that it's there, but it, it's not for me, right? And so all of that stuff is filtered out and the stuff that remains is the stuff that, hey, I, I can teach that other stuff, right? And I, I can show you that other stuff, but it's not my game. This is my game. The stuff that's left behind in the colander. Because all those holes is because my legs were too short or, um, you know, I've got bad knees or I've got a shoulder injury or it, all of those things are part of what makes your game. You know, if you've got bad knees, you can't change that. You know, maybe you can get a knee surgery, but if you got bad knees, me getting in, involved into a leg lock game is probably not the best idea. I should really try and create a game that keeps me out of leg locks in general. Yeah. Or, you know, and that's the other thing, you can still dabble. So you want to know the answers to things. So when you're there, if that's not your game, you can still get out of it, right? The best way to, to know the answer to somebody else's stuff is to actually know the exact same stuff, right? Whether you do it or not, you're like, okay, he's setting up A, B, C, I've got to do this, and or here's the counter, it's to make it simple, right? Yeah. And you're exactly well, right. Well, and Eddie Bravo talks about it, that everybody, everybody in 10th Planet should be able to get into Lotus, which is where your legs are crossed on top of each other. And, and that's a flexibility thing. Well, not everybody's flexible. You know, and some people have rheumatoid arthritis and they'll never be able to get into full lotus. So yeah. they they can't they can't be playing rubber guard the same way that somebody like Castile or or Eddie Bravo or the those guys at 10th Planet are doing. You know, their body just it doesn't move that away. Yeah, we and that's a good we have a 70 plus year old man that comes to our gym that you know has got lots of joint problems, right? So he can't do even some pretty you know, normal moves because you just can't get up like we can get up. Like if I'm flat on my back, I can just turn my legs and get up. You can't do that. You can do like so we've got a specific design and game for this guy at 70. But it's a it you know, it's, again, it's it's shooting expectations for what he's he's perfectly happy, right? And he's doing it mostly for self-defense and exercise, right? If he gets in a fight with somebody that doesn't know jujitsu, then he's he's gonna destroy them. If he gets in a fight with somebody that's training for IBJJF he's in trouble right but but he's also realistic he's not training for IBJJF right like it's he's he's doing perfectly for what he's doing but again I, I think you know I think you're right there's no I, I think the whole point of it is there's no easy answer right the easy answer is you know the 10,000 hours like as much as we want to you know not think that's well, true and yeah, right. and 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 in my ten thousand hours, my the thing that I kind of the idea that I came up with is I told I started saying this when I was a purple belt, and people would ask me about getting good at something. I was like, well, it's kind of like the rule of tens, right? The first ten times you do something, you're garbage at it, and I don't care what it is in life. If you the first ten times you drive a car or write your name or try and pee in the middle of the toilet or like it doesn't matter what you do in life. The first 10 times you do it, you suck at it. And there are certain people that might be a little bit better quicker or a little bit whatever, but 10 times is not enough times, right? 10 times 10 is 100. You do something 100 times and now you probably understand it. And if somebody watched you do it, whether it be write your name or tie your shoes, they know that you know how to do it, but it's not very clean, right? 
Um, so, so a hundred times that's, that's when it starts to like, okay, he's starting to get it. If you do it a thousand times, 10 times, a hundred is a thousand. If you do it a thousand times after that thousandth time, now it, it, that looks like you're supposed to be doing it the way you're doing it. You know, like I can tell that you've put time into it and that that is something that you're comfortable with and you're starting to understand the nuances about it do it 10,000 times. And this is kind of where it matches up with the 10,000 hours. I think you do anything 10,000 times, you're going to be a master at it. You know, how many times have you tied your shoes? Because now I don't have to look to tie my shoes. I can tie it blindfolded Mm -hmm. or write my name. I don't, sometimes I'll write my name and I'm not even looking at the paper. Yeah. Right. And kind of what you were saying about going, this kind of goes to autopilot too, is like, and with the 10,000 hours, I think most of us who have drove have all had those moments where, you know, there's a 15 minute stretch that we've forgotten right? yeah. driving home from the Academy or whatever it was. And it was like, I don't even remember how I got from point A to point B. And that's because we've done that route so many times, that specific pathway so many times that you, you don't need a conscious mind to get you there. The only thing you need is enough conscious mind to make sure that you're not hitting kids or running into other cars. That's the only conscious, your mind, your body, everything has already developed that pathway to get home. And it's the same thing when you do jujitsu. And and this kind of goes back to your game is like, once you have your game, if man, if I get into dog fight, I'm not even thinking anymore. Cause once, if I'm in half guard and I get my underhook, everything happens by itself. Kind of like what you're saying is autopilot. I know that if I push into you and you push back, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. It's kind of like a lateral body drop sweep. I'm going to sweep you that away. I know that if you don't push back and you let me knee tap you, I'm going to knee tap and go to side control. I know that if you get heavy on the wizard that I'm going to limp on that arm out, I'm going to take your back. Like all of this stuff is happening and I don't even think about it anymore because I've done that so many times and that's part of my game. And that is where the 10,000 hours is. That's where the 10,000 hours lies is, can you do this without thinking about it anymore? And we all want to get our jujitsu to that autopilot place where I don't have to think about it anymore, but it's, it really is because I've spent so much time making that my game, making dogfight my game and half guard my game, and then coming up into top side control or in half guard and then passing half guard and then trying to get to mount and looking for like, you know, some sort of attack from the, the mount, but that that's, that's been my game. And I funneled every, all my energy is funneling everything back into that game. And that's where I've spent that time. And so I, I think that's, you know, I know that the book 10,000 hours talks about, um, about musicians and people coding and a, a lot of different things, but change one part of that, right? If we took Mozart and we asked him, okay, you're a classical pianist, but can you play rock and roll, right? If you were able to bring Mozart to today, ask him to play rock and roll, he could play it, but would he, would he be as good as, as Jimi Hendrix playing rock and roll music? Probably not. He'd have a good understanding. He could show it to you, but he wouldn't be able to, he wouldn't be the best at it because it's not his thing. His thing was classical, right? I understand, I understand X guard. Am I an X guard player? I'm not. I can show it to you and you'll be like, wow, Gary knows X guard. But like, that's not where my passion lies and that's not where my expertise lies, you know? And I think it's the same, like there are doctors, but there are many kind of doctors, right? Some doctors are surgeons and some t- doctors are pediatricians and some doctors and, it, and they could understand each other's job, but that's not where their specialty is. And I think that that kind of goes the same with, with, anything in life especially jiu-jitsu is like there are guys who are who are good at certain things it's okay to be a specialist there's nothing wrong with being a specialist and just because you're not a leg lock guy that doesn't mean that you suck at jiu-jitsu or <laughs> it's just a part of your game that's lacking i'm sure that if you've gotten to a point where you know you're, you're a black belt you've had a little competition success and maybe i'm saying this to bolster myself up and feel better about myself and my leg lock game but i'm sure that you, you can show some stuff and it might not be your A game, but people will understand it. And if it, it's something that they can do, they can take it, you know? Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Well, yeah, that's, I, I mean, 
perfectly put really i mean honestly there's not much like this whole conversation i think all the all the parts that you hit there are like perfect meaning like i've heard eddie bravo said the same thing if you, you don't even look when you tie your shoes that means because you've done that so many times you've done the ten thousand hours of tying your shoes. you don't even know that you've done it right you've done it so much that i can have a conversation with you while i'm tying my shoe right goes back to my jujitsu like i don't know what i'm doing because i'm on autopilots because that's my game right it's in it is what it is and that's the thing but you know to to you know say things on both sides like if you're unhappy like if you don't have a good leg lock game you don't and you want to fix it it's going to take ten thousand hours to fix it. so you can't take a shortcut because which goes back to that phrase because i'm good at something doesn't mean i'm going to be good at everything there's no shortcut right um and it, and it goes back to the very beginning it's like every time inevitably every single time and i've had a ton and i'll name a few by name just to be nice to people that are on here but you know my friend paul my friend Justin, my friend nate you know, like most people you know gary then every single time that somebody said man they've gotten really good what are they doing let's say they are training jujitsu five days a week <laughs> they're they, the summer they trained every day right yeah not everybody can do that right but I guess one thing that maybe I uncovered on here that I didn't think of is if you can't, then study. If that's what you want to do, just study. That's at least better than nothing. Not going to, not going to pretend just looking at, like, I can't watch video games. Maybe you can, I don't know. I'm not a, a young guy. They apparently now you can watch uh, people play video games on YouTube and it's a big thing, right? <laughs> right. They're going to, yeah. I'm going to say that you can't watch that and become good at Fortnite. I'm just guessing. But maybe you can if you already play Fortnite, because we can we do jujitsu and I can watch jujitsu. There's been a couple of times where I was off an injury and I came back, quote unquote, better, maybe because I watched jujitsu the whole time and I understood a couple of things better. I don't know for sure if that's accurate, but, but, you know, how many times have we seen that somebody took off an injury? Most of the time you're not better, but sometimes the guys is actually better. You just understand a few things a little bit better because you, you had time to reflect and not just do your same game every day. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think if, if anything, the most, you know, what, what made me think of this whole subject and you've been preaching it for years and I've, I've been preaching it without knowing I've been preaching it is, you know, they did a study. There's no magic thing. The, the conclusion was, if you want to be a master or something, you have to put in the time and you have to put in the effort. I think we all kind of knew that, but it is the thing there actually is. And that's what this book book was about. There is actually no outlier. Like Michael Jordan is not Michael Jordan because he didn't practice. Like there's a great, and while right after I watched this book, Kobe Bryant, somebody posted a thing on a thing. It was about Kobe Bryant. And he said, don't look at what I've done. Look at how I did it. And that's all that he meant. He woke up at 4 a.m. and played basketball every day. And so I think that's the jujitsu. Like if that's, if your goal, like why Gordon Ryan, BJ Penn, all these guys got black belt in three years. What did they do? They did jujitsu every day, right? Yeah. So, well, and and that, that kind of goes, you know, and we like the guys that we see the difference in, right? When people are like, "Oh, he got so good," and so to kind of like, uh, I'm gonna sing out one of the guys that I'm training with now. His name's Wes. Um, he uh, he's a white belt, and he's on the verge of getting his blue belt. And everybody's like, "What is you know, Wes? He's this small guy. He's like 140 pounds and." man he's getting so good and and uh it's just he puts in the time he's there all the time he helps teach kids class he's always thinking about jujitsu and so yeah he's gonna get better and i do every april i do arm bar april and i tell everybody that they're responsible for a thousand reps of arm bars. and the way you can go about getting reps of arm bars is you can practice right so if you show up at, at the gym and you're warming up or just kind of there early you can do 25 or 30 reps and each one of those will count as one rep. If you get a tap, if during a roll and you tap somebody with an arm bar, well, that counts as five reps because it's harder to pull off during a live roll than it is just going through the motions. And then if you tap an upper belt, it's worth bonus. So you can, you can get bonus points that way, but, but it's just a matter of getting in the reps. And Wes has already got his thousand reps for April. We're only halfway done. You know, and I guess we still got a week left now, but he, you know, he, he put in the time. He was like, he would steal somebody and say, Hey, I want to get a couple reps in. And then he'd do 15 reps of arm bar and then they would go and start training, you know? And it's one of those things where it's like, 
I guarantee he's he's probably caught more arm bars rolling in his last two weeks than he has the entire time he's done jujitsu, just because it's in the forefront of his mind. He's gotten the reps in. Yeah, you know, and 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 it's just putting in the work. The guys that have only done 200 reps of arm bars, they're not, they're not, their body isn't learning. Oh, I gotta get my I gotta get my ass to their shoulder. I gotta get my hips to the shoulder in order to finish his arm bar. And every time he does a rep of arm bar, it's reinforcing that pathway that like this is where I need to be to have an arm bar. Yeah, you know? and, and I there's no way to shortcut that. No, I, I think that's awesome because now you're forcing with, by trickery, you're forcing somebody to try to get in the reps, right? That's yeah. a thousand. We're only 9,000 off. And you didn't have to spend three hours a day, 20 hours a week, yeah. <laughs> 10 yeah. years, whatever it is. Right. Cause you, you kind of tricked them into it, which I think is good. And really you just saying this, we, we've already missed April is next time that we should probably all do that as, you know, as friends and as an association, we'll say, Hey, here's Gary's, challenge not to just to his gym let's all do it right i think that would be awesome right maybe we could do some other stuff and then because that's really what motivates you right if somebody says hey i want you to do run this 5k next month so up into that 5k you're going to get ready for the 5k and you're gonna start running right you're better at running right so that and it's and that's what i need in life right it's that is actually an example because i don't run but every time somebody's like hey I was like, sign me up for a race because that's the only thing that's going to make me run. I mean, like, otherwise. Well, and, that's, and that's the other thing, too, is like sometimes people will look at it and they'll be like, man, that's, I don't know how I'm going to get a thousand in. Well, then break it down. It's 33.33333 arm bars a day. Yeah, that's it. Not- that's not many. And you can, I don't care if you do them to your dog or your kid or your wife or whoever, you know, it doesn't, it, you don't need a mat to do arm bars and from guard or from mount like it just it's just spinning stepping on the hip turning kicking the head stepping over the face and then go back to reset you can do 33 of those with your wife you know or your kid so yeah. it's it's not that many now we in, when i was doing crossfit all the time and i haven't done it for years but that was i don't remember if the number was a thousand but it might it probably was but i think they had a month where you did a thousand push-ups right and that was the thing. So that, and that forced me on top of my workout, the top of CrossFit, I would show up and do 50 pushups because you could knock them out, right? It's a couple sets of 20 or whatever I could do at that time. And, um, but then I was doing push. I would never have done that before. It's just another, I think it's a good trick to kind of get that in. And then, you know, for CrossFit, it's a little bit different that pushups, not like a functional movement that I need for CrossFit, but what it is doing is I'm doing CrossFit because I want to be in shape and I want to be muscular. And I want to, you know, it was, it, it was, actually a beautiful thing quite honestly now looking back at what they did so i in, in i guess the reason i'm saying is that's what i want to do with us i think i think that's a thing we can do so maybe you know as as friends as teammates as an association we should probably do more goal setting as a group right and most people don't like i'm you know, we're all part of marcelo but you know marcelo's not writing out things like hey let's do this we're just which i also like too they'll be honest with you i like autonomy and so does everybody else and that's why i like just do your thing but i do think you know maybe we don't overdo it right we just say hey like this is from gary's place let's do this and if we did something every month everybody would get tired right but maybe we do something every now and then from some people and it doesn't have to be too crazy i think it would be awesome right it's a little trick and then essentially then if i'm getting thousand reps of arm bars i'm also doing jujitsu which is also part of the game right like as long as i'm doing jujitsu like it's on my mind and that's as we said earlier that's mental part probably is most important i've come up with I always joke at my gym, more moves, we call them shower moves, because that's the time where I finally have time, peace and quiet, no wife, no kids, where I come up. And I was like, it may be, you know, when I describe it kind of a, a slightly gay sounding thing where I was like, hey, I came up this move in shower because I was thinking that you did this to me. And, you didn't like, and they're like, huh, you came up that while you're naked, huh? But that is the truth. It's like that time that I have to meditate. And I was thinking about you. It's unfortunate, but it was the time, right? And we had a move actually we called Josh in the shower choke, but all it was was a Zagalo choke, but that's back when I was a white belt. And I was like, hey, this guy's escaping my guard by sticking his arm underneath me. What if I wrapped his arm and then choked him, which some people call it paper cutter, bread cutter, all these certain moves. But at that time, I thought I invented it. <laughs> like, I didn't know. I was like, what if you did this? And we called it the Josh in the shower choke. And then sadly, uh, you know, Marcella came and called it the Zagalo choke. <laughs> I mean, the whole world does that. You know, I was like, God oh, damn, you know, I'm not Eddie Bravo. I haven't come up with whatever, you know, but anyway, the point is, yeah, I, I think quite honestly, yeah. I mean, we probably put a bow on everything. I think 
it's a powerful conversation. I'm glad that we, you and I chose to stay on there and do that because it, I think we'll address a need in jujitsu is what is the thing and why it's the thing. Like, instead of just saying, what do I need to do better? And a lot of people say, just keep showing up. That's what Hoist used to tell me. That's what Marcelo would tell me. And that sounds like a generic answer that sometimes you get pissed at. But if you sign, if you kind of break it down and say, well, this is why they've, they've literally scientifically proven 10,000 hours is the need. What you need to do is work on, let's, we can break it down, your A game. Just work on the things you're good at, fund all the things you're good at, but do it more. Like just be here more. Yeah. And if you can't be here more, do it mentally. Go watch some videos, do some things, do what you can. Just spend time on jujitsu. If you just show up for jujitsu when it's time, it's just not enough. And then that's okay too. You got to be okay with that. You can't complain if you're not getting better. You just got to understand like, hey, this is as good as I can get with the time that I can get. And that's fine too. If I'm a 40 year old man with a, with a family and this, that I got to be okay with that. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's something I've said is like, don't, don't lie to yourself about what your, your goals are, right? Like if you're coming here for self-defense, then come here for self-defense and don't get upset when you don't get the, you don't, you get a, a rolling win over the guy who's training to compete and is here five times a week. Like, it's just, you guys are here for two different things. You know, if he goes to your job and he only shows up a a couple of times a week, he's not going to be able to do your job the way you do your job. And this is no different. I mean, it's anything that you get good at at in life. I I always, I always use the, the, like a guy who runs a backhoe, right. And, or, you know, you know, some sort of excavator and, you know, somebody might be doing it for three years and they can do the job, but somebody who's done it for 20 years can, can, it's so, so much smoother, you know, when it comes time to like, I seen a thing where on uh, MythBusters there was a guy who could park uh, an excavator in the back of a dump truck, and yeah. and it, yeah, and it was one of those things. Was like it's because he's had so much practice running that bucket and all of the levers because there's so many moving parts on that. But besides the bucket has the articulated arm, the the seat turns. You can go forwards and backwards depending on which way you're going. So like trying to keep yourself orientated in that world takes a lot of practice and there are guys who can not only do it but do it to the highest level and almost break dance with a with a a backhoe you know (laughs) and and it's it's just time in and don't be upset if that your goals are not world champion you know if your goals are not to get competition success you shouldn't be upset that oh man i didn't beat this guy in a role well no you're not supposed to. <laughs> yeah, just gonna be honest with yourself. Like that's what, what the other thing I was thinking of in you know in closing time stuff too is that how many times when people say like I don't have time to work out right let's just let's talk about that besides jujitsu well you do but yeah. if you're not gonna wake up at five a.m. and work out then like you you got to be okay with that too like then that's saying well I'm okay with being overweight not in shape because I'm not gonna put the work in because like the rock does the rock gets up at four a.m. right like and he's a busy man. I know that because I listen to some of his videos. He gets up 4 a.m. If I'm not going to get up at 4 a.m. and work, I can't be the rock. I'm okay with that. <laughs> like, it's like, right? That's the secret. I'm not going to be mad at him. I can't say, like, can't be jealous. I'm gonna say, like, I'm not willing to put in that work. So I have to be okay with the product that I have. If I'm not okay with the product that I have, here is what you need to do. We know it. So let's just be honest with each other and with, with our teammates. If I can, I can't. And you can just say, I can't. But also don't use it as a crutch because you're only hurting yourself. You can't say, well, you just beat me because you come five days a week. Well, no shit. Okay. <laughs> like like it's, it is what it is, right? Don't bring it up. Either you put in the time or don't bring it up. Just, right. That guy, he's good. And you got to strive well, to be better. And I even do that during the warmups because I know like in, during my warmups, everybody's at a different fitness level, right? And so yeah. part of the warmups, you know, is running around and kind of like, high knees and all that shit too but then we circle up and we do crunches and flutter kicks and all this stuff and and i usually do a 10 count for every person that's there and it's easy if there's only six people show up but sometimes there's 15 you know and so when you're doing 150 crunches not everybody there is going to do 150 crunches some people are gonna they're gonna bow out at 40 right and i tell them all the time it's okay the only person you're cheating is yourself you know if you can do more i don't know if you can do more but you do if you can do more, you should. And if you can't, then don't. Yeah. And that's okay. 
<laughs> and that's okay. Yeah. No, I, I'll tell you what, I think is I'm glad that I started listening to the audio book, right? That made it front on the, uh, you know, front on my mind, something that you and I talk about every day. And, you know, I think some of the points that you brought up actually, like, I do want to say this. And then one of the things that I'm working on as just a human is being better at metaphors and you're very good. <laughs> right so, meaning you know the calendar all that stuff you bring up and that's when well sometimes when i listen to horian gracie and his sons henry and them that's that's always what they do this beautiful metaphors bring up stuff and it makes you understand things and uh so you have a great ability to to like communicate with that which again not related to this i just want to say like i appreciate that, that <laughs> i'm actually learning from you while we're talking so Again, beautiful thing. And that's, you know, now we've got to communicate some of the things that we get to say as teachers, but also like anybody that listens to this because they want to get better at jujitsu, which is hopeful. That's, that's, there is no secret recipe, right? That, I mean, that, I guess that is the secret recipe, but it's not a shortcut. Just like losing yeah. weight's not a shortcut. I can't take a pill. I've got to have less calories than I have output, right? I'm, you know, to get into that, but it's always a simple recipe. You just got to do certain things. Um, so hopefully, man, I, I think it was actually pretty good, man. I appreciate your your time. We made do with what we had. We had other plans, right? And uh, yeah, I think it, I think it worked out as it was supposed to work out. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. awesome. Well, good, man. Let's finish up with that, man. It was awesome. All right, brother. Take it easy. All kinds of love. Um, we should have uh, we should have another one maybe Saturday, right? Yeah. Let's. Uh, yeah. Exactly. We'll have a couple of things. Work on a couple of things that you got, and let's let's keep kicking some butt, man. All right, man. Take it easy. All right. Have a good rest of the day. See you, man. We'll do. Later.